Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74. In today's video, I'm talking about the progress on the RC Scrappy build that I did the last few days. One of the topics is the current status you can see on the double wishbone suspension. I finally finished it so far that I can test uh, if the suspension works, what the travel range is, if everything works mechanically clean. Then the second topic is the trailing arm for the tailwheel. I finally found the time to shape the carbon part for the trailing arm and uh, a little step I did on the tailwheel and this will be the last topic for today. So as always let's jump right into the build steps and have a closer look at all the details. In my last video about the scrappy build I showed you the repair I did on the carbon shock mounts which are screwed onto the upper double wishbone. The details about the repair you can find in the last video and today there was just the last few steps on these parts to install the whole suspension. First of all, I had to sand the inside of the repaired carbon parts to get a clean surface to prepare the parts for the final finish I will do later on the build. Next steps for the shock mounts were some uh, holes I had to drill, two holes uh, for the screws to mount the mount on the wishbone and two holes for the screw to install the shock absorbers on the mount. So I had to mask the carbon parts with some tape and mark the position for the two screws for the double wishbones and I also used a nail to push some small holes into the parts before I started to drill because the nail makes it possible to drill exact at the spot where you want to have your hole. Then I drilled the hole in three steps. The hole should fit the M3 screw. I drilled one, two and three millimeter hole in these three steps to make sure that I do not drift with the too big drill at the beginning. And like this had pretty precise holes at the exact right spot. To get a cleaner look on the shock mounts, I drilled some sink holes for the sink head screws just to make the whole installation of the mounts look a little nicer. Then I marked the same parts for drilling the shock absorber screw holes. It was the same procedure as on the first holes. Used the L to do a little center spot, then drilled one, two and three millimeter. I figured out that the first holes I drilled weren't perfectly in line, all four holes of the two mounts. So what I had to do is to correct the exact position of these holes. So I filled up the holes again with some 24 hour epoxy and let it cure for one day. And after this, I drilled some new holes, uh, slightly changed the position to make sure that all the four holes are perfectly in line. I used the easy trick to check if every hole is really in line. I took a three millimeter carbon tube, pushed it through all the four holes and checked if the two carbon parts are perfectly at the same height, if the carbon tube is also perfectly leveled and everything looked good. Then I did the first fit check of the shock mounts on the shock. So I installed the mounts on the shocks and checked the position with the carbon mounts installed. I masked the upper wishbones to mark the exact position of the lower hole of the shock mount and also the shape of the whole carbon mount just to prepare the wishbone for drilling the screw holes to install the mount later. Because I have no access to the second hole of the shock mount while it's installed on the shocks, I could only drill the lower hole 
I had to remove the upper wishbone and drill the lower hole. Also the same procedure again, using the L, drilling one, two and three millimeter hole and screw on the shock mount with only the lower screw. Like this, I was able to mark the exact position of the hole for the upper screw of the carbon mount. The markings of the whole shape of the carbon mount helped me to keep the carbon mount in the perfect position while marking the upper hole. Then it was the same steps again, marking the hole with the L, drilling one, two, and three millimeter hole, and did the first test installation of the shock mount on the upper wishbone. The carbon mounts fitted pretty well on the wishbones. So I was able to reinstall the upper wish bones on the fuselage and screw back on the shock absorbers and had the first function check if everything is perfectly lined up and if the suspension works well. The suspension has really great range. These are now still way too soft springs. These are the stock springs which came with the shocks but I'm already ordered some harder springs. The first try I did on harder springs were way too hard. They worked perfect in case of size, but they are one millimeter thick uh, spring steel and these are way too strong. So I ordered 0.6 now. It's unfortunately a try and error game because AliExpress where I get these springs doesn't mention any strength of these wires so I have no idea how strong which size of the wire is so it's just a random game uh, to figure out the right strength the right diameter of the spring steel wire to get the perfect working suspension on RC Scrappy. I also installed the wheels just to have a look how the whole suspension with the wheels on looks like and how the suspension works with the wheels on and everything looked pretty good. I think the look of RC Scrappy's main suspension is pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to get the perfect springs to see the suspension work absolutely perfect. Then I started to work on the trailing arm for the tail wheel suspension. This is the current progress of the trailing arm. You can see here the tail wheel will be put on the trailing arm like this. And you have on the right side the pivot point of the trailing arm and the shock will be mounted on top inside the trailing arm. That was also an experimental part. I never did a complex carbon shaped part like this before so I was surprised how well the part came out so far so let's have a closer look to the steps I did to get to this progress here. As for the templates for my previous carbon parts I also used some XPS foam and sanded it down to a template which had the shape you can see on the part so far the target was to wrap the foam with carbon layers. These are three layers of carbon, which gave around one millimeter of thickness of the whole part. The shape of the foam part is all everything hand sanded. Uh, didn't use any special tools for this. So I was a bit surprised because the part looked pretty symmetrical and so I decided to go on with this foam part. To make the surface of the foam part a little stronger, I added one layer of pure epoxy, 24 hour epoxy to reinforce the surface. I wanted to avoid any dents into the foam and the epoxy layer helped to reinforce the surface of the foam. Then I cut the three carbon layers in the right size the first try I did to wrap around the carbon, around the foam, was a fail because I tried to put on some wet epoxy onto the foam and 
without curing of the epoxy, I wrapped the first layer of dry carbon fiber around the wet epoxy, but the edges of the foam part were too sharp, so the carbon fiber didn't keep on the foam, so it came off again and again, and I had no chance to keep the carbon fiber in position. So I used a technique which is shown on a great uh, YouTube channel which is called um, Easy Composite and he showed a wrapping technique which works absolutely perfect. With this technique you put on your 24 hour epoxy onto your template, let it cure for with my epoxy for around 10 hours, then the epoxy is pretty sticky and the carbon fiber sticks perfectly on the epoxy. So then I was able to wrap around the first layer of carbon fiber around the part and the carbon fiber stayed exactly in its place. It's really important that you use your carbon fiber dry, so do not soak it up with epoxy. Just take your dry carbon fiber, wrap it around the halfway cured epoxy and let the epoxy cure completely. So after one day you can put on a second layer of pure epoxy to soak up the already wrapped carbon fiber layer. There were some details you have to be aware of. You have one position, this is the upper line here. On this line you have to be careful to not get a gap between the left side and the right side of your carbon layer. For this you have to cut down the excess of carbon as low as possible. The lower you cut it, the better you get the carbon fibers through each other from both sides. So they will cross from both sides and as you can see there is no gap at all. So the carbon fiber is perfectly closed and on the flat spot here you just have a bit too much of material and you cover one side with the other so like this you also get a perfectly closed flat area on this side like this you have a perfectly wrapped carbon fiber part with no visible seams and it's absolutely strong i'm really surprised how strong this part is with only three layers of carbon fiber then I had to repeat the whole process two times, so after curing of the first layer soaked up with epoxy, I had to sand down the whole layer and make it ready to put on the second layer. Then you have to put on again pure epoxy, let it cure for 10 hours, wrap around the second layer, soak it up after 24 hours with another layer of pure epoxy, sand it down and do all the same steps with the third layer. After all the layers were done and the third layer was also soaked up with epoxy and all was perfectly dry, I sanded it down and hoped for a perfect shape, but I didn't reach a smooth surface so there were some uneven spots all around the part. I added three layers of pure epoxy. After each layer was cured, I sanded down the pure layer of epoxy, added uh, another layer, sanded it down, again another layer, sanded it down, and like this I reached the result you can see now. It's still not absolutely perfect, but it's clean enough to work with the part, so I have to cut it down in the next steps to the exact right shape, cut off the excess on the front and the rear end, drill the holes for the pivot point on the fuselage, pivot point for the shock absorber, drill a big hole on top which takes the shock absorber inside and drill the bottom holes to install the tailwheel so the final installation of the tailwheel will be something like this and I think that looks pretty similar to the original tailwheel of the full scale scrappy. So to make this part if you can work on it every day it takes you at least six days of work 
because you always have to wait these 24 hours for every single layer you put on. It's around one week of work, but I think the result is worth it. You get a really lightweight part, you get a custom shape, the exact shape you are looking for. So I think it makes absolute sense to work with carbon because you will have a lot of fun uh, with such beautiful custom made parts. The final finish will follow later during the build. First now I have to work on the part with all the holes I have to do and when the whole plane is almost finished I will add some more epoxy layers just to get the perfect finish on the part. Then I once again did a little change on the wheel adapter which will be installed on the trailing arm. The reason for this is that the adapter was a little bit too long because of the scale look. For this I had to cut off the front end of the wheel adapter, sanded it down with a Dremel and also sanded it with some 240 grit sandpaper and use the sponge sanding block to get nice round edges on the part, uh, drill the new hole, masked it and marked it and used the L to get a perfect centered hole, drilled one to one three millimeter hole so I get this shape for the part now and I really think that I'm pretty close to the full scale design and I'm really looking forward to install the whole tailwheel suspension on RC Scrappy so that will be an exciting moment when all the suspension will be installed and I'm really looking forward to the look of RC Scrappy on its wheels. So this is it for today's video. In the next video I will show you more progress on the tailwheel suspension and hopefully I can also show you some first steps to build the belly of the full scale Scrappy which uh, has a lower round shaped belly in comparison to the carbon cup so I hopefully can give you a first look on this progress so thanks a lot for watching have a good time see you in the next one bye bye